If you listen today, you will have faith for youth renewal and it will start working in your life. We've been given certain messages here and I've been preaching on youth renewal. Well, if I've been given it and you're here and you're partakers of this grace, which we talked about earlier, then you've been given the message of youth renewal. Then it's part of your faith. Almost 20 messages I've preached on it. And I preach for about an hour usually but that's a lot of time to spend on one topic but it, because it's been we've been given it and so should we be faithful to that part of our doctrine or should I just ignore it and not talk about it anymore no we need to be faithful to what God's given us how about you you're gonna be faithful to it you're gonna believe God for it yeah so yes we should be faithful to the message and is God serious about it is God serious about his youth renewal yes you should be too if he's serious about it we should be serious about it I got news for you you've already you already believe in youth renewal you already do what do you what's it gonna be when you go to heaven if you're a believer a Christian what's it gonna be like when you go to heaven what's gonna be there well there'll be prosperity sure it's prosperity what about healing yeah I guess you don't really need it because there won't be any sickness there or accidents you understand what about youth renewal will that be there yes what do you think eternal life and we all know this that eternal life is youth renewal mm -hmm. right. right the yeah. fountain of youth what would that be mm -hmm. eternal life be youth we all know this yeah. but we put it off in some religious thing and we put it off till heaven let me ask you a question when do you receive eternal life here and now and it's a measure of the same life it's called youth renewal and he quickens your mortal body are you here yes. it's part and parcel of the promises of God and he tells you not to forget about it mm -hmm. do you already believe in youth renewal you just put it off till heaven everybody puts everything off till heaven when we get to heaven no you receive it now mm -hmm. you receive it now how about when Jesus returns how old is he gonna be <laughs> well, a couple thousand years old right I've never seen a 2,000 year old man he's gonna look really decrepit I would imagine no nobody thinks that what's he gonna be he's gonna be he's gonna be fit right he's gonna be fit Jesus how's that youth renewal everlasting life he's partaking of it. say he's partaking of it he's partaking. and so are all the Saints on the other side partaking of it who does this God does this and it's the same force that we partake of on this side only in a in a smaller measure are you here mm -hmm. it's not some strange thing it's the same God it's the same power of God if I say everlasting life everybody knows what I mean especially when they put it off till heaven do you think that's what everybody does they put healing off till heaven I'd say no I say say no. no no don't put it off till heaven you receive it now you receive everlasting life now what is everlasting life in your body now youth renewal it renews your youth the Bible says he quickens your mortal body he renews the youth of your mortal body are you here yes. fact some people won't fulfill I hope you're hearing me some people won't fulfill what God has called them to do without youth renewal without receiving youth renewal the Bible talked about having strength to be 80 years old physical strength you understand that yes but beyond that you have to be in the power of God and we see over and over again and I've covered this many times that, that years 80 to 120 are God's years where he quickens you to do things that you couldn't do before remember Moses how old was he he he'd messed it up he was out in the field at 80 years old right. right and then he came in the power of God and began to do things didn't even start till 80 right. I'll show you some other ones as we go on here but some won't fulfill what God has called them to do without it without youth renewal they will run out of time are you here you think that's happened to anybody many 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 people see because God has those ages between 80 say 80, 80 and 120, 120. 
Hallelujah. where God will do things for you and with you that he won't do earlier right. unless the Bible is just tricking us somehow but it's not you know why because God requires certain things from maturity maturity takes time do you get that and mature, I'm talking about maturity in the spirit too because you can you can be a lot more mature in, in a young age you understand that the Bible yeah. talks about that you'd be a lot more mature in a young age than some older people they're just babies frankly they're gray-haired babies let me say the churches are full of them mm -hmm. we'll get into talking about that that's where we're going to Hebrews chapter 5 talks about people who should be teachers by now but they're nothing but babies they need milk it's not how you start that matters it's how you finish but you have to finish right. you understand you can't just not finish and if you listen today you will have faith for youth renewal and it will start working in your life if you listen today you will have faith for youth renewal and it will start working in your life so it takes time to mature maturity is God's plan that's why we were supposed to grow up are we supposed to stay a baby are we supposed to stay a young man no we're supposed to mature it's God's plan in the natural it's God's plan in the spirit it's God's plan for the body of Christ we're supposed to grow up right we're supposed to mature it's God's plan and it takes time we're called to go there you're called to go into your 80s you're called to go into your 120 are you here mm -hmm. the Bible says so and people are like eh. 80 to 120 those are very important years to him now maturity maturity is where the blessings are if I grow up into the things of God then when I get mature I can expect blessings that I wasn't getting when I was young and stupid That's right. doesn't this make sense maturity is where the harvest is God's design you don't harvest anything or reap anything that's immature right. is this true, true. The, it, when the harvest comes in that's because the fruit is mature what did Jesus say he wants to reap the mature harvest are you getting this yes. well I don't want to be old nobody said you know we're gonna talk about that it's not just being old it's being able to be there and reap what we're supposed to reap that you can't reap until you're there maturity it's God's design you understand you don't harvest or reap any immature thing you leave it until it grows up and what if it doesn't grow up even though it got old then it becomes worthless right. you haven't found yet did you find Hebrews chapter 5 yeah. all right Hebrews chapter 5 let's look down at verse 11 of whom we have many things to say now he's trying to say things to get things across to them so that they can hear it and be changed yeah. mm -hmm. and what what do you think the change would be one of the main changes <laughs> to grow up to mature so they could reap a harvest reap fruit of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing for when the time you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become say become, become. they went back they became and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat verse 13 for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe mm -hmm. or as I like to say he is a baby mm -hmm. and we've got some people they've been around for a long time but frankly they're a baby and if you bring something up to them they get offended you ever offend anybody tried speaking the truth they get offended and they don't like it and yet they've been around all this time but they have need now somebody's gonna give them some milk you want some milk here's your milk don't give me any strong meat for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he's a babe but strong meat belongs to them that are of what full age, full age. Yeah. 
that's what we're talking about you got to be of full age to be able to handle the strong meat right he's going to talk about what that strong meat is here in a minute the strong meat even to those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil chapter 6 Hebrews 6 verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on to perfection or go on to maturity we're leaving behind the things of babyhood and we're supposed to if God permit go on say go on go on well what do you think is going on from from you know uh, from babyhood is that's getting older right it's maturing let us go on to perfection not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment and this we will do if God permit what are we gonna do we're gonna go on we're gonna mature we're gonna grow up right. are you here mm -hmm. and growing up takes time mm -hmm. for it is impo verse 4 for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted say tasted tasted, tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good Word of God and they and and the powers of the world to come what is the number one power of the world to come everlasting life what is everlasting life what do we know that to be youth renewal what does it say an adult or a mature person who's gone on to maturity is going to acquire and taste and frankly acquire a taste for yeah. everlasting life or youth renewal are you here yeah. are you seeing this and he makes this I find it very interesting here he makes the connection to partakers of the Holy Ghost and the powers of the world to come is the Holy Ghost gonna be in the world to come yeah, yeah. what about does he have anything to do with everlasting life yeah Romans 8 says he's the one who quickens your mortal body What's he quickening it with everlasting life mm -hmm. are you getting any of this mm -hmm. you're gonna have faith today increase one of the main powers of the world to come is youth renewal and everlasting life it says we're supposed to if we're not a baby guess who's not going to taste of this power of the world to come the baby is the one who are unskillful in the word of righteousness so if we can be skilled in the word of righteousness which frankly is speaking God's word mm -hmm. then we will be able to taste of the power of the world to come which is everlasting life which is youth renewal are you getting any of this we're in Hebrews right there mm -hmm. let's look over to Hebrews chapter 11 and see who obtains because he was saying that it's going to be people who grew up who would be able to obtain and taste of this right mm -hmm. through the Holy Ghost look over here at uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 2 for by it the who obtained mm -hmm. the elders obtained mm -hmm. well now we know why the elders obtained if we read back in chapter 6 because they grew up to the place where they could obtain it and what did they obtain the powers of the world to come are you here yes who does your Bible say obtained elders <laughs> say the elders, the elders obtained. obtained now elders doesn't necessarily just mean old it means there were because we knew we know this right you know there's old people that are, are not elders in this sense they're just old yeah. frankly most of them are old babies yeah. elders doesn't mean old in this sense it means advanced it means mature and it takes time are you here is this exciting at all yes. so God will only reveal things to the mature and he only reveals things to the mature I hope you can see that by now that he won't reveal to anyone else or to the less mature 
we know that in the natural right until somebody grows up you're not gonna tell them certain things God's the same way that's where we got that from so he's not gonna reveal things until you grow up say God's not gonna reveal things until I grow up well if you want the thing what are you gonna have to do grow up you're gonna have to get mature you're gonna have to become one of the elders God will only reveal certain things to the mature things that he won't reveal to people that aren't mature one of those things is Holy Ghost worship or using the words I worship you Holy Ghost which frankly out of that comes the power of youth renewal or a power of the world to come and frankly it's one of the messages of the last day church Holy Ghost worship and youth renewal all right so uh, let me show you something you all right with that go to uh, first John can you understand that that God reveals things to people that are mature mm -hmm. that he doesn't reveal to others and when you get more mature you're going to have more revelation about certain things that other people don't have mm -hmm. right? right this isn't too difficult mm -hmm. first John chapter 2 verse 12 I write unto you who little children. little children so he's writing to the little children well I hope they can read you can't be that small right <laughs> I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake is that good yes, yes hallelujah who who my sins are forgiven what kind of you know we know that yeah I mean that does, that's how you get into the game you get your sins forgiven right you don't have to be an elder to know that right, right? right. it's you're like hey hey Jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures and raised, was raised from the dead on the third day and they go oh yeah that's great I'll receive that I believe that well good join the club right what does that make them according to here it says I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you uh, for his namesake verse 13 I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning who's from the beginning Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is from the beginning very good see write unto you fathers because you knew him that is from let's read on here I write unto you young men now can you see the difference here he's calling some people children he's calling some people young men and he's calling some people fathers I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one right mm -hmm. I write unto you little children because you have known the father are you getting this yes. I hope you're seeing this verse 14 I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning he says the same thing again who have the adult fathers the mature the elders have come to know they were at once you got to understand at once they were young children they went through this progression having their sins forgiven oh then they went to be a young man right but then they became they matured in their faith to where now all they know is him that is from the beginning mm -hmm. are you getting this yes. who Holy Ghost I've written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning I've written unto you young men because you are strong and the Word of God bides in you and you have overcome the wicked one you see that you can see how that's playing into the young man's psyche hey I've overcome the wicked one yeah I'm strong is that good news yes. mm -hmm. I'm not berating any of those steps I'm simply pointing out that as you become mature you begin to know him say know him, know him. that is from the beginning the eternal living God whose name is the Holy Ghost are you getting this mm -hmm. so Holy Ghost worship if you can follow me and hear this is a mature message I've been saying this over and it took a long time to get here what did it take to get here it took some growing up right it didn't just happen it took some growing up worshiping the Holy Ghost knowing him that's from the beginning is a mature message it's time for the church to mature and come to this because frankly Jesus can't return to the church who hasn't let him go away yet right. it's an end time message well guess where we are 
we're in the end. shouldn't the church be growing up by now yeah yes. we're in the end time this is an end time message knowing him that's from the beginning so the church must mature now the elders are the ones who obtain are you here mm -hmm. the elders obtain youth renewal from knowing him that is from the beginning mm -hmm. who should youth renewal really apply to anyway the elders right. you don't really need a whole lot of youth renewal until you become an elder well but it's through worshiping the Holy Ghost knowing him that's from the beginning that you obtain say obtain, obtain. youth renewal and you get it in the room of Holy Ghost worship I hope you're getting this I'm just gonna continue on here now God doesn't have a problem with the elderly I don't know why you would think he would but God doesn't have a problem with the elderly he has called you to be an elder he has set it up that way for you to grow to maturity he has a problem with the age related issues and limits are you getting this yes. God doesn't have a problem with maturity or becoming into your 80s and all the way up to 120 he doesn't have a problem with it he has a problem with all the issues and limitations that come with that are you here yes. when was Abraham's most productive years when Abram was 99 I'll probably take you there a little bit when Abram was 99 the Lord came to him and said things 99 and his wife was pretty old too they were well stricken in years. what about Moses when did God come to Moses 80 he knew he had a call he knew he, he was trying to do things on his own but before that but then all of a sudden at 80 when were Moses his most productive years 80 to 120 mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you are called oh listen to me you are called to the productivity of old age the only kind of productivity that old age can produce are you here you are called to the productivity of old age you are not called to the physical effects of old age Amen. side effects and limits of old age that's what everybody equates in the natural that's what everybody equates with old age that's not what God has called you to he's called you to the productivity say the productivity, the productivity. that can only, that can only come, come with old age, with old age. the elders obtained part of what they obtained was youth renewal are you here Philippians chapter 3 let's look at verse 13 brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do see Paul was getting he was becoming an elder right but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling say high calling the high calling, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. let us therefore as many as be perfect and the word perfect means mature as many as be elders as many as be mature to the degree where you could be called considered an elder right, right. let as many as us have has obtained that as many as be perfect be thus minded and if in anything you be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you see now as you get mature you should have a grasp on prosperity you should have a grasp on healing are you here yes you should have a grasp on youth renewal all of those things and if you be any otherwise minded God is gonna do what he's gonna reveal maturity to you are you getting this Right. Yes. yeah where are we called we're called to maturity we're called to obtain like an elder I like that say I'm called, I'm called to, obtain to obtain like an elder like an elder and elders obtain according to your Bible right elders obtain like nobody else the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and how do you walk with him by saying words you suppose that is a baby message no 
that's took a time took a while to get here it's part of being an elder that's how they obtained by saying and agreeing with God the Holy Ghost knowing him that's from the beginning and walking with him how did Adam walk with him that was from the beginning by saying words mm -hmm. the Spirit of God so here we go this is your faith this is your this is ma where maturity is taking to you. say this is where, this is where maturity, maturity is taking me, taking me. right with uh, that that little statement about you know the elders obtaining was in the great faith chapter mm -hmm. how did they get they got there by faith they obtained by faith yeah. faith is not being moved by what you see faith for an elder is not being moved by what you hear faith for an elder is not being moved by what everybody else thinks are you here even in the even in the natural people that get older and they know something about something they don't want to hear what the stupid kids have to say anymore because I know you understand mm -hmm. they're not moved by that same thing when you grow up you must call your youth renewed an elder calls it that way Abraham when he was 99 I'll take you over there began to call things that be not as though they were he didn't do that until he was 99 because it's a mature thing to do is to call things that be not as though they were you must call your youth renewed now an elder in the spirit is gonna know that that's how you obtain this is mature faith you must call your youth renewed every day don't be moved by what you see or feel or what other th others think right mm -hmm. this pleases God this is maturity in the faith are you here yeah. this is maturity in the faith the power of youth renewal is in the calling the power of youth renewal is in the calling flesh responds to the calling flesh responds to the calling what are you calling you're calling its youth renewed is this any good should be there's nothing like youth renewal there's nothing like the power of youth renewal there's nothing like receiving it why do you think heaven's full of it you're gonna get to heaven you're gonna go who what is this it's called everlasting life it's called youth renewal oh I feel like I, I would never die up here <laughs> right well it's the same power down here it's the same God that we serve it's the same life force that quickens us and you start to get a taste of it we're tasting of the powers of the world to come who are the elders you still here yes. pretty excited about it let's go to Romans chapter 4 who yay preaching myself happy that's what Hagen used to say all the time preaching myself happy Romans chapter 4 you there uh, verse 17 as it is written I have made thee a father of many nations before him or like him whom he believed even God who quickens the dead and calls those things that be not as though they were so Abraham began to call things that be not as though they were do you understand that that's the maturity factor he begins to say things about himself that God said about him are you here yes. but let's look back at just a couple words there it says before him whom he believed even God who quickens the dead was Abraham dead at this time he quickens the dead Abraham wasn't dead that's not what he was talking about what did God quicken he believed God that quickened his dead like body parts yes. are you here mm -hmm. he wasn't dead but those things had be had uh, matured to an age where they weren't working the way they should be anymore are you here yes. that's exactly what he's talking about and you know it he wasn't dead God wasn't talking to a dead guy he was talking to an aged guy an elderly guy who couldn't have kids and neither could his wife so what part of quickening the dead do you not understand he made him and his wife alive he renewed their youth 
dead refers to the age related effects dead referred to the age related limitations mm -hmm. abraham said hey i'm 99 years old you say i'm gonna be a father of many nations and my wife remember he said all of these things mm -hmm. my wife she can't bear children either she's she's well stricken in age i'm as good as dead as far as childbearing goes mm -hmm. are you here all right so when it says oh who quickens the dead say quickens quickens what does that mean makes alive mm -hmm. who he believed god who made alive dead parts dead body parts parts that had become old which means he believed god for youth renewal how is this not preached in every single church across the land when he's abraham for goodness sakes what did he believe god for oh he believed god for isaac how did he believe god for isaac he couldn't have isaac unless he believed god to quicken the dead and not dead as in dead but as as in old to the point where he couldn't function anymore what does god do god does this he believed god who does this do you believe god does this mm -hmm. it's the same god we all say oh our faith is of abraham ah, is it and where, where do we get this this revelation of youth renewal we get this revelation of knowing him that is from the beginning we get this revelation by the spirit of god who reveals things to people that are mature that he doesn't reveal to other people right Genesis chapter 17 let's look at verse 1 and when Abraham Abram see how it says Abram right there hey, Abraham means the father of many nations he wasn't even Abram yet I mean he wasn't Abraham yet he was Abram and when Abram was 90 years old and 9 99 the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him I am the Almighty God walk before me and be thou perfect <laughs> and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly and Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying as for me behold my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be the father of many nations neither shall thy name be any more called Abram but thy name shall be abraham for the a father of many nations have i made thee now from that moment on when he was 99 he began to call things say call things call things, call things that be not as though they were what was he calling he was calling himself the father of many nations up until that day he never called himself the father of are you here yes. he never called himself the father of many nations so he began to call I'm telling you the call, the flesh responds to the calling you must call your youth renewed so we saw that right he was 90 he was 99 and began to call himself something different if we go over to Genesis chapter 18 verse 11 now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be say it ceased to be it ceased to be something ceased to be you can think about whatever it is you think ceased to be but abraham was 99 years old and sarah was old too right and it ceased to be with sarah after the manner of women i tell you what ceased to be first of all she she went through menopause do you understand this she was no longer even capable of having children even though she didn't have them before and Abraham being 99 year old 99 years old wasn't even thinking about relations right to have children she'd well, gone well past the age of childbearing and frankly he probably didn't care about any of that stuff anymore are you here right. mm -hmm. anyway it says well stricken verse 11 well stricken in age both of them well stricken in age and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women and therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I am waxed old shall I have pleasure my Lord being old also so she wasn't just laughing at herself mm -hmm. she was laughing at him yeah. mm -hmm. saying this isn't gonna happen mm -hmm. unless something supernatural happens right and then it says it then in verse 14 
well let's read verse 13 the Lord said unto Abraham wherefore did Sarah laugh saying shall I have a surety bear a child which am old is there anything verse 14 is there anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed I will return unto thee and according to the time of life Sarah shall have a child it literally means I will come and turn back the time of life where how far did God have to turn back the time of life in Sarah quite a ways to go back to childbearing years mm -hmm. and people say oh that was just Sarah I didn't do anything to Abraham think about it mm -hmm. who'd God do this to some random person some some sketchy Bible story that maybe nobody even knows about this is him dealing with the father of our faith Abraham Isaac their child that came of this is called the promise are you here yes she was postmenopausal, I guess you could say it and then God had to turn back time in her body all the way back till then mm -hmm. God said I'm gonna visit her and do something and turn back the time mm -hmm. go to Genesis chapter 21 and let's look at verse 1 and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and who the Lord who did this the Lord the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken for Sarah conceived and bare Abram a son in his old age now did it actually change the age of Abraham no he was still as old as he was but God quickened both of them what do you mean both him I think he just quickened Sarah well that'd be fine but he also quickened Abraham because Abraham did have a part to play do you understand right. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to them looking and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bare unto him Isaac who now over the period of time here Sarah actually dies a little bit later and then go over to verse uh, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 1 then again Abraham what does it say Abraham after years that Sarah finally passed on Abraham took a wife and her name was Keturah and she bare him Zimran and Jacoshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua what these weren't these weren't like quintuplets here this took time years and years of more childbearing years with Abraham are you here did God quicken him did God renew his youth oh my goodness and it just kept going on verse 6 but under the sons of the concubines which Abraham had now I don't I don't necessarily agree with concubines but my point here is proven by the fact that he not only had this wife and all these children he also had concubines and had children with them when back when we first started this story Abraham was 99 years old mm -hmm. and well stricken in age and not able to do anything about it mm -hmm. are you here yes. God renewed his youth yes. how did God renew his youth he, he began to call things that be not as though they were your flesh say this my flesh, my flesh will, respond will respond to my calling, to my calling that is what elders do that's how elders obtained that's how the elder Abraham obtained the youth renewal that God promised him did God promise you youth renewal yes how are you going to obtain it by calling it who so here we have a message and an anointing on this message of youth renewal and if you can hear it it will do something to you it will quicken your mortal bodies if you believe it and call it from this day forward you shall have it say this eyes I call, I call your youth renewed, your youth renewed. Ears, ears I call, I call your youth renewed, your youth renewed. Heart, heart I call, I call 
your youth renewed brain I call your youth renewed I have youth renewing power working in my body right now in Jesus name Thank you Holy Ghost we ask you to quicken these people that heard this message and said those words and those things are happening right now says the Lord just maintain it and keep going forward and I will reveal myself to you as the one who renews your youth 